Good morning, and let the journey begin. Are there any announcements this morning as we begin? Well, well. People I love very much had a 60th wedding anniversary. Oh. A 60th wedding anniversary. <laughs> Whoa, and who would the happy couple be? Translator, since he doesn't speak English, I don't speak French. Jean Paul, I need 
to let you know that I heard, I heard you talk about being abused by a black robe. My pain is really present with that, and I want to dance with you during this time. Jean Paul, when I began my counseling career, I worked with sex offenders in Newfoundland. The, the priests from Newfoundland and the brothers from Mount Cashel. I was entering into that space of both victim and offender. And I want you to know that I'm dancing with you as we go through this. John Paul, there's one thing else you need to know. I'm a black robe. And I come to heal my community and to yours. We cried together, we hugged each other, and then we sat next to each other in the sweat the whole time that we were there. It was a deeply meaningful thing for me. And I would really appreciate it that it started out the very 4.30 in the morning before we did it. We were doing that work. So what do I do with this international incident I'm going to cause when I get screwed up something and don't do it correct? So uh, I was wrestling with that, being at the back of the line. Uh, I would do things wrong. One of the women came to me and said, you know you got your skirt on backwards? Your ass is hanging out. Right? <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. So we have this crown that we make out of, out of uh, our, our sweet grass, and we put it on our head, and the crown is crossed in front, right? Uh, so uh, it's a sign of protection, I think, or something. Uh, so I'm pouring my way through one of the dances, and I'm realizing I'm feeling it, but I'm not seeing it. <clears throat> uh oh. I got it on backwards. I'm wearing it like a backwards ball cap. I quickly turn it around, and I've got it on the front again. And then I realized that although I'm at the back of the men, I'm at the front of the women. So the one with the most experience is the one directly behind me in the line. And so afterwards she says, so did you enjoy your dance? I said, yes, I did. I said, I got a lot of things backwards. And she said, I know. <laughs> I knew the moment of grace had come when one of the elders came to me and said, do you know you dance like a crazy seagull? <laughs> I knew I was accepted because they took my heart and they took what I came for and they really, they really, it was a wonderful experience and I'll share a little bit more a little bit later in the service, but uh, I want to thank you. Uh, one of the things, I never really knew what that was about, but uh, I asked for people to eat with me uh, because, I, so at the moment when you're eating and your intention is to remember me, I don't feel hungry or thirsty at all. I didn't feel hungry once, so I thank you for doing that for me because it allowed me to gain the strength. I had several of them say, we didn't think you are going to last two days, buddy. <laughs> and it lasted the whole time. So I thank you for being part of that journey with me. We've got three more journeys to go, so we'll just be where we are. But thank you for that. That's my announcement. I'm wondering that what they all call you Seagull. Seagull. Crazy Seagull. <laughs> That's my name. That's my mother. Crazy Seagull. Our service begins on page 94. Stand in your hand. Share this In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. God of all mercy and compassion. Come to the help of your people, turning us from our sin to live for you alone. Give us the power of your Holy Spirit that we may confess our sins, receive your forgiveness, and grow into the fullness of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Let us pray. Gracious God, have mercy on us. We confess that we have turned from you and given ourselves into the power of sin. We are truly sorry and humbly repent. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things that we have done and things we have failed to do. Turn us again to you and uphold us by your Spirit so that we may live and serve you in a newness of life through Jesus Christ our Savior and Lord. God, who was rich in mercy, loved us even when we were dead in sin, and made us alive together with Christ. By grace we have been saved, and in the name of Jesus Christ, our sins are forgiven. 
Almighty God, strengthen us with power through the Holy Spirit, that Christ may live in our hearts through faith. Amen. Amen. Let's sing. <clears throat> Whose blood set us free to be people. 
reading from the book of Proverbs. Wisdom has built her house. She has set up her seven pillars. She has slaughtered her beasts. She has mixed her wine. She has also set her table. She has sent out her maids to call from the highest places in the town. Whoever is simple, let him turn in here. To him who is without sense, she says, come eat of my bread and drink of the wine I have mixed. Leave simpleness and life and walk in the way of insight. He who corrects a scoffer gets himself abuse and he who reproves a wicked man incurs injury. Do not reprove a scoffer or he will hate you. Reprove a wise man and he will love you. Give instructions to a wise man, and he will be still wiser. Teach a righteous man, and he will increase in learning. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. <laughs> today is Psalm number 34, and uh, always a little bit hard to find since they don't have page numbers in the Red Book. Uh, Psalms begin at page 335, and shortly after that you see Psalm 34. Verses 9 and 14, we'll read responsibly by half verse. Of instructions. Fear the Lord. You saints of the Lord. For those who fear the Lord lack nothing. The lions are in want and suffer hunger. But those who seek the Lord lack nothing that is good. Come, children, and listen to me. I will teach you reverence for the Lord. Who among you takes pleasure in life? And desires lifelong to enjoy prosperity. Keep your tongue from evil. And your lips from lying words. Turn from evil. And do good. Seek, Seek peace, peace and pursue it. Eating and drinking 
has eternal life and will be fit and ready for the final day. My flesh is real food and my blood is real drink. By eating my flesh and drinking my blood, you enter into me and I into you. In the same way, God fully alive, Father sent me here because I live because of him, so the one who makes a meal of me lives because of me. This is the bread from heaven. Your ancestors ate bread and later died. Whoever eats this bread will live always. The Gospel of the Lord. And we're going to sing again. Father David, he had a firm grip on the kingdom. 
Solomon loved God and continued to live in the God-honoring ways of David, his father, except that he also worshipped at the local shrines, offering sacrifices and burning incense. The king went to Gibeon, the most prestigious of local shrines, to worship. He sacrificed a thousand whole burnt offerings on that altar. And that night, there in Gibeon, God appeared to Solomon in a dream. And God said, What can I give you? Ask. Solomon said, You are extravagantly generous in love with David my father, and he lived faithfully in your presence. His relationships were just and his heart right, and you have persisted in this great and generous love by giving him this very day a son to sit on his throne. And now, here I am. God, my God, you have made me your servant, ruler of this kingdom and the place of David, my father. I'm too young for this, a mere child, and I don't know the ropes, hardly know the ins and outs of this job. And here I am, set down in the middle of the people you've chosen, a great people, far too many to ever count. <coughs> Here's what I want. Give me a God-listening heart so I can lead your people well, discerning the difference between good and evil. For who on their own is capable of leading your glorious people? God, the master, was delighted with Solomon's response. And God said to him, Because you have chosen this and haven't grasped for a long life or riches or the doom of your enemies, but you've asked for the ability to lead and govern well, I'll give you what you've asked for. I'll give you a wise and mature heart. There has never been like one like you before, and there'll never be one after. And as a bonus, I'm giving you both the wealth and the glory you didn't ask for. Not, not, there's not a king anywhere who will come up to your mark. And if you stay on course, keeping your eye on the life map and God's signs as your father David did, I'll also give you a very long life. As I said, the lectionary always gives us the options in scripture reading. And today we read about King David's passing. Solomon is now king. It was not a smooth transition. As you know, hereditary monarchy is pretty patriarchal. I mean, Queen Elizabeth became the ruling monarch because there were no men. She only had a younger sister, and even then, if she had a brother who was even six years old, he would have become king, leaving her out. So, no boys, <laughs> oldest girl, welcome Queen Elizabeth. Now, we know that England has changed the policy from first male to firstborn, but it doesn't matter what gender, firstborn is firstborn, period. That's the new rule. Well, Solomon had an older brother. His name was Adonijah. He was number two in line. Absalom, his brother, was killed in a coup that, uh, that happened when he tried to take over the kingdom from David. Adonijah is the prince in waiting. He's been waiting for this for a very long time. In fact, he was kind of impatient. He knew the crown was his since his brother's death, and so the whole country knew it was his and he was the next in line. These are the rules. And when David lay dying, Adonijah was so close to the crown, he could taste it. He goes to the political super PAC and tries to shore up their endorsement. He throws a pre-coronation party. Now, Adonijah is the kind of guy who likes to party, so any excuse for one would be great. So he goes off, fights the who's who, and they come to gain the new king's favor. Houston, we have a problem. The news of the party gets out, of course it did. This was the party of the centuries, and so you needed to show up so the new king could make you rich. Nathan the prophet gets word, goes to David, who is still in charge since he's not dead yet. And David declares Solomon the new king. Not only is this controversial, it's problematic. Solomon's mom is Bathsheba. It was after David's affair with Bathsheba and the subsequent follow-up that caused the civil war. Usually people want to make illegitimate children a secret. Here is God 
making this illegitimate child the king. Now, just a point. Solomon is not the baby from the pregnancy that has caused the crisis. Solomon's brother was miscarried before he was born. But here is Solomon, son of a shotgun wedding, appointed as king. The very first thing that Solomon does when David passes is that he goes to Adonijah and faces him in person and says, Are we going to have a problem? If we do have a problem, I will kill you. Is that understood? Adonijah agreed and lived a long and full life. But all the others who see Adonijah as the rightful leader would not have a leader, so the movement never gets started. Solomon would have grown up in this context. He always knew he was the problem child. His perspective of the political backbiting, coups, and cloak and dagger manipulation would have always been in the forefront of his mind. Knowing is one thing, managing it is something quite different. You're surrounded with greedy, heinous, <coughs> rivalrous issues that are already there. How, in God's name, do I manage this? So in the middle of the night, visited by God, he doesn't need money, nor a long reign, no, he needs to know how to handle this nightmare. As a result, he asks for the skill to apply knowledge in circumstances in which the truth is often hidden, which cause cases are presented with incomplete data. Solomon has to learn the human condition, the early markings of greed, the bitter rivalry of competition. God, if you can give me this, I would certainly appreciate it. And in the end, Solomon was very rich and a very long reign and could address problems when they were small. He was one smart cookie. In the end, Solomon was very rich as a city. I've often asked him if he was so smart. So Solomon asked, if you're so smart, why did you have so many wives and concubines? <laughs> Managing one relationship is tough, but Robert, isn't it kind of pa patriarchal to have so many? <clears throat> Here's the wisdom. If there are so many, it means you're there because he wants you there. There's no shortage of replacements. This means no one will let their drama affect the relationship with the king. Oh, this list is so long, it takes two to three years just to get through the list, providing the king wants sex every night. So, you're special, but you're not any more special than anyone else. Imagine if a daughter from Newburn were chosen by the king. The whole community would feel special. But we recognize that the king also chose someone from Parkdale, another one from Bar's Corner, and another one from New Germany, and even one from Blackland. <laughs> yes, the community would feel special, but no more or any less than anyone else. There's an economy claim here as well. If you're chosen to be with the king, there's enough income to feed your family for life. And your family gets bragging rights in the community as having a close relationship with the king. Solomon has a career of arranged marriages for political purposes. I'm grateful this was Solomon's calling, not mine. I wouldn't be able to do that. But he has a superpower. Solomon has a superpower. It was not his wisdom that was the gift. It was his continual access to God as a consultant in each case. He was not Merlin the magician with his wisdom department and his pack full of wisdom that he could dispel any time. His wisdom is shown in the conversation with the Almighty. God, I don't want a possession I want access to your consulting. With this, Solomon had a very long career and he died at peace. He built the temple. He developed a judicial system. He made peace with his neighbors. Solomon's son did not continue in the tradition of the divine consulting. The political rivalries returned and soon the kingdom would be in civil war. It would be divided and invaded by neighbors and dispersed. Our journey begins first by asking the questions 
we need to consult. God is not our staff. We lay out our problem and wait for God to answer. Sometimes the answer comes quick. Sometimes the answer takes longer. The key upon waiting on God for the answer. Sometimes expecting the quick answer and having to wait exposes us to our expectations. An answer to prayer is not instantaneous. We trust that God will bring the problem. When we bring the problem to God, we trust to God the answer when it's time. In the meantime, we'll be exposed to our own assumptions, our own expectations, and our own entitlements. Having this timely wisdom, assumptions and expectations and entitlements totally block our hearing from God's answer. Use the time to clean your house. Returning to the Gospel, I read, I'm telling you the most solemn and sober truth now. Whoever believes in me has real life, eternal life. I am the bread of life. Your ancestors ate manna in the desert and died, but now here is the bread that truly comes down out of heaven. Anyone eating this bread will not die ever. I am the bread, living bread, who came down out of heaven. Anyone who eats this bread will live and forever. The bread that I present to the world so that it can eat and live is myself, this flesh and blood self. May our experience today as we celebrate the Eucharist reflect this. The invitation is that we come to participate and we come to take Jesus into our own body and allow that wisdom to teach us and heal us in whatever way we need. Let us pray. Eternal God, since silence seems to be the voice of holiness, the only language you speak directly, then I pray to be steeped in it until I fear it less and welcome it as an usher to grace. A narrator of sacred mysteries, until the silence cease the fretful conversations of my mind with too little else than itself. Until silence calms my heart to an ease, convene my senses to an anchored focus, hush my tongue to a chastened hole, until I discern in the silence an answer to that necessary question, which for the life of me has not yet occurred to me to ask until I'm stretched out alive and deep to its dimensions and catch at last and ready your assuring wink at me. O Holy One, I hear and say so many words, yet yours is the word I need. Speak now and help me listen, and if what I hear is silence, let it quiet me, let it disturb me, let it touch my need, let it break my pride, let it shrink my certainties, let it enlarge my wonder. Gentle me, Holy One, into an unclenched moment, a deep breath of letting go, of heavy expectations, of shriveling anxieties, of dead certainties, that, softened by the silence, surrounded by the light, and open to the mystery, I may be found by wholeness, upheld by the unfathomable, entranced by the simple and filled with the life of joy. That is you. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Let's sing again, shall we? <coughs>
be seated. When I started to go to Sundance, people would say, how can you do that? That's such new age stuff. And so I was curious about it myself. Uh, how do I integrate a Lutheran experience and the native Sundance? They are two things that actually match each other. One is in our intellectual realm, and the other is on the physical realm. If you know, remember the story of Pentecost, the experience or visual representation is that when the fire or the spirit came down, it came down like fire. And so each individual apostle received the fire. In the community of the Sundance, the fire is a communal fire where it's shared by everyone, and it's the central spot that's really their experience of grace. What happens when you have a problem, or something comes along, you, you quit it in some sort of concrete form, and you offer it to the fire, and it gets transformed into a prayer. And the prayer is the fire is held by the community for the whole time, and the fire is looked after by people for the whole time. There, we have more volunteers to look after the fire than we've ever had. And so that's the result of that. The Sundance itself, uh, in my Western thinking, I did a little YouTube video, it's on my YouTube channel, about Sundance and psychotherapy. It is what I've often sought, a way out of trauma. And so it offers in four days uh, a physical way for the whole community to walk through a trauma and come up with healing at the end. We don't know what the healing will look like because we're offering the prayer as the incense to the fire. As a result, the prayer can be answered in many different ways. In the way that it works is that the first day is the day of the hit. It's when we recognize the things that have happened to us that have overwhelmed us and we are present to that for a whole day. When you think about those things that disturbed you as a child, or maybe some losses that you had, ways in which you start to spin in a different direction. That's the day that we focus on it. But you're not by yourself. You're not isolated in that. The person standing next to you is doing the same thing at the same time. And whatever conversation is going on between him and the Creator is going on there. That's the focus of day one. The focus of day two, called what I call monkey brain day, is when you start to talk to yourself about the pain. So we always try to make meaning out of something, and so when you think about how we build a grudge, for instance, we feel the pain of someone hurting us, and then we start to talk to ourselves about it, and we form it out of clay, and then we breathe into it and bring it to life. And if I were to breathe into my grudge every day, just 10% of my energy, by day 11, my grudge would have more energy than I do. <laughs> and then after I hold it for a number of years, my grudge will then tell me what to do. This is how we make idols. This is why God says, it's probably not a good idea. So during day three, we now recognize each other as suffering. And it is the day of healing. It is the, it's the day of medicine, I should say. The day of healing is day four. The day of medicine is where we are now find that our pain is transferred into compassion. And so my compassion I offer to you, your compassion you offer to me, and what has happened to me when I'm offered compassion that is way more than what I could ever need. And so when I offer my compassion, it's like this big gallon of drum, big hundred gallon drum of compassion that's there. And I only need a cupful, but I'm offering what I have too, which makes up the 100 gallons of compassion. So in that context, it's a deeply healing and moving time. Day three, there's a ceremony called the pole ceremony. I'm getting a little emotional because this is personal. The pole ceremony is when we take that pool of compassion and we put it into a prayer for one particular person. And for that person, that warrior, what happens is that we get pierced in the back and a little stick. They take, they take a skin and they put the exacto knife in it and then put a stick in it to follow it. So we're pierced the two sides, the back of us. And then we're hooked 
to the skulls. And we pull the skulls. The ten skulls are the prayer. And so we pull the skulls as a prayer for the person that we have once defeated. And so as a result of that, the whole community is focusing on this prayer. And this prayer becomes the compassion from the Sundance community to this person, to whom the persons are praying. We never know who it is, but we know that all of our focus and our attention of our compassion is there. I'm going to ask Debbie and Jeff to come forward. For my first poll, Debbie offered her pain and her struggle for cancer. I was touched to pull for her behalf, and I was moved that I could be there. The hit of being diagnosed with cancer, and then what your monkey brain does with it, and her willingness to offer to us her sense of that pain for compassion. And so I present to you, Debbie, the rope that I used is prayers from people from Sundance to you and other people from the Sundance to our church. Thank you. You have the experience. Jeff gets the t-shirt. <laughs> <laughs> Let us now pray for the people of God, the church, and the well-being of all. Rooted in Christ and sustained by the Spirit, we offer our prayers for the church, the world, and all creation. God of wisdom, enlighten your church, guide the theologians and scholars, authors, and seminary professors as they work with greater knowledge and invite others into deeper understanding. Teach us to ask faithful questions and open our minds to new ideas. God, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. God of creation, mend the earth, cool warming oceans, preserve melting ice caps, increase our awareness of climate patterns, reveal new approaches to ecology, challenges we face. Shield those in the path of hurricanes, tropical storms, especially Ernesto. And then God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Yeah. Hear our prayer. God of all nations, direct our leaders. Grant them courage to lay aside political grudges. We think particularly of Hamas and Israel, Palestine. Renew their determination and address the difficult conflicts. Guide them in the work reconciliation. God, in your mercy. God of compassion, tend to the wounded, rescue those that, mental, that are tormented by mental illness or mired in addiction. Ease the anxiety of those struggling with dementia. Come quickly to those who are grieving and offer to all who are suffering, especially Debbie and Jeff. In your mercy, hear our prayer. God of all beauty, inspire artists, bless those with visual and musical gifts, enliven the assembly, especially those in St. Matthew's Lutheran Church here in New York. Bless this creative work of poets, hymn writers, composers, painters, sculptors, and others that enrich our worship and daily life. God, in your mercy. God of resurrection, bring us to new life. Give us the living bread from the heaven through which we're able, in your love, 
and on the last day raise us with Mary, the mother of Jesus, and the others, and all the saints, to our eternal life. God, in your mercy. Amen. Amen. Gracious God, we remember Pastor Judy, who was with us for a long time and served with such a big and open heart. We grieve her passing and wish her life for her journey. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Amen. We lift all of these in our prayers to you, O God, confident and promise of her saving love. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. 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 You may have a clean it. <laughs> Thank you. I'll let them all catch up when we get back. Peace of the Lord be with you always. And also, also with, with you. you. Now offer each other the sign of peace. God, we offer these, these gifts that coming from our abundance, coming from our sacrifice. Offer asking you to bless them and receive them. We pray these things in Christ's name.
In every age, you sent your prophets to make known your loving will for all humanity. The cry of the poor has become your own cry. Our hunger and thirst for justice is your own desire. And in the fullness of time, you sent your chosen servant to preach good news to the afflicted, to break bread with the outcast and despised, and to ransom those in bondage to prejudice and sin. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, he gave thanks, he gave it to his disciples, and he said, This is my body, which is broken for you. Do this and remember me. Again, after supper, he took the cup and he gave thanks, and he gave it to all to drink, and he said, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this and remember me. Put me back together. For as often as we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ, Christ will come again. Remembering therefore his death and resurrection, we await the day when Jesus shall return to free all the earth from the bounds of sin and slavery. Come, Lord Jesus, and let the church say Amen. 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 Send your Holy Spirit, our advocate, to fulfill the hearts of all who share this bread and cup with courage and wisdom, to pursue love and justice in all the world. Come, Spirit of freedom, and let the church say Amen. 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 Join our prayers and praise with your prophets and martyrs of every age, that rejoicing in the hope of the resurrection, we may live in the freedom and the hope of your Son. Through him, with him, in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray the prayer that Jesus follows. Our the Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The gifts of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God.
God, I love you. With this bread, oh, sorry. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen and preserve us in eternal life. God of abundance, with this bread of life and cup of salvation, you have united us with Christ, making us all one with your people. Now send forth the power of your spirit that we may proclaim your redeeming love to the world and continue forever in the risen life of Christ our Lord. Amen. Gracious God, loving all your family with a mother's tender care, as you send the angel to feed Elisha with heavenly bread, assist those who set forth to share your word and sacrament with those who are sick, homebound, and imprisoned. In your love and care, nourish and strengthen those who will receive the sacrament, and give us all the comfort of your abiding presence through the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord's face shine upon you and be gracious with you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Amen. Let's sing one more time.
behind you to protect you, above you to watch over, within you to give you peace. Go in peace and do what? Yeah.